This is a video tutorial for Infinity Analyze 6.5.0 and higher. With Analyze 6.5, we've introduced a fluorescence capture capability in the form of a combination of settings table and a fluorescence capture wizard. This particular video is going to take a look at the prerequisite uh, settings for the multispectral capture and uh, you need to begin by defining your settings so we're going to take a look at that first off. You'll notice there's an icon on my toolbar. If you have toolbar icons enabled you'll see this new multispectral settings icon here. You'll also notice that the there's a new camera menu. The camera menu contains functions that were previously at the bottom of the file menu and it makes more sense to have it on a separate camera menu here. Capture and the flyout dialog, you'll notice multispectral capture is there, but it's grayed out at the moment. When multispectral capture is grayed out, it means we don't have any settings configured for our multispectral capture, and therefore this is the place we're going to begin. So this tutorial will focus on the multispectral settings. When you click multispectral settings, you get this dialog which contains the column headings for a table. At the moment, that table is empty. To create your own definitions, for the fluorophores and the filter cube sets that you're using, you simply start by clicking the Add New button. Click on the first field for fluorophore. Put in Mito Tracker Red, for example, um, if that's one of the dyes that you're using. The Excitation Wavelength field is not actually used by the software. You can use it, put it in for reference. The Emissions Wavelength if you know that for your particular dyes you put it in and the software will represent the approximate emissions color for that wavelength that you've entered. This is really just sort of a safety check to make sure that you're putting in uh, the correct names for the fluorophores that you're using and that you get, you're getting the expected uh, output wavelength color from that um, for that definition. The display name here is up to you an abbreviation or whatever name you want to display during the capture wizard process. This is what you'll see as you go to each channel. And then the display color by clicking in this field. This is the lookup table that will be used for that particular channel. So if you wanted to use a yellow uh, display lookup table, you can click on that to display that particular dye sample as yellow. You can also choose to use the emissions color the approximate emissions color will be generated there or you can choose the exact color that you would like that to be represented. The last column is the use column and this tells us whether or not a particular sample is going to be used and presented to us as part of our wizard for capturing those channels and you just proceed in this fashion adding new channels to your list. I'm actually going to delete these at the moment because I'm going to show some other functionality and that is once you've defined your channels you're going to want to save them for a backup copy to be able to share them with colleagues to be able to take them to other computers and then you can load them back up. So I already have a saved set here my sample fluoroforest.channels file I'm going to open that up and you can see right away my table is being populated my filter cubes that I use most commonly are the top three here so I've got a DAPI blue, MitoTracker red, Alexa green in my sample and those match my blue, red and green filter cubes. If my filter cubes were arranged in a different order such that my red one was first, I can use these up and down arrow keys to move the fluorophores uh, in my sequence. So in this case I would be clicking a red on my filter wheel first, then my blue, then my green channel and you'll see that I've only got three channels on my filter wheel so the first three uh, are set to use and in fact my blue is my first channel so I'm going to return it to that order so this is the order in which I'm going to be capturing when I go to the multispectral capture uh, my blue channel my red channel my green channel if I had other filter cubes I could enable them and each time you enable a channel it's reminding you that you have this many uh, channels to capture because you could have a list of fluorophores defined that is longer than the screen itself and some of those checked options could be for channels that are off the bottom of the screen so that's why this uh, dialog will tell you how many channels you have enabled. You also have the ability to 
have uh, at least uh, one single wide field channel defined there's a separate button to turn on the wide field because uh, you don't want to use the same uh, color choices this is a wide field is going to be a, a different uh, function altogether to combine a wide field images with your fluorescent captured channels so I've now got it set up according to my filter cubes I've got uh, blue red green filter cubes set up my dialog is set up to capture those I've saved my results uh, in that predefined uh, channels file as you saw me load up so remember once you've defined your channels whether it's simply two channels or three or four or eight or a dozen channels make sure you save them and then once you're completed your definition use the OK button and now I've got a set of multispectral settings that will be remembered by the application I can go back and revisit it uh, by clicking this icon but I can also launch my multispectral capture either from this icon or again from the camera capture menu selecting multispectral capture and we'll address the multispectral capture whether you've got a monochrome or a color camera in a subsequent video tutorial that concludes our video tutorial on multispectral settings.